The terrifying moment a giant Yellowstone sent tourists running for their lives as the geyser erupted. It was a It was a erratic, periodic eruption that occurred in a 30-foot-tall geyser that spewed boiling water from a small property near alternate 395 South Virginia Street. The water was coming from a pipe next to a long crack in the ground, a crack that geologists began investigating last year, as it harbored a cluster of springs that spewed bubbling hot water less than a foot high. The crack had been there for a while, but it was dry. Rachel McCander, geological information specialist at the Nevada Bureau of Mines and Geology, told Two News Nevada on Friday. Last year, in March, we went down and saw that the crack was doing what we call a perpetual spout. There was boiling water coming out of the ground, gushing. Jim Falls called it a mini geyser. He and other scientists studying the area believe the new geyser is connected to the bubbling water spout. The volcano began erupting on Sunday afternoon, June 1st, and according to residents, it spewed water for about 24 hours before finally drying out completely, including smaller spouts nearby. On Thursday night, the volcano erupted again. Despite its fascinating and scientifically significant appearance, scientists warned the public against visiting. Mykander measured the water temperature at 95 degrees Celsius, more than 200 degrees Fahrenheit. It can cause third-degree burns. It can kill you, he said. Furthermore, the ground in the area is very unstable. There's hot water flowing underneath, and because of this, the geyser is unpredictable. Mike Ender and other geologists aren't yet sure what's behind the geyser activity. He's currently studying documents outlining the property's history and permits to see if they hold any clues about what's facilitating the water's current path to the surface. Contrary to rumors, he and other scientists don't believe the geyser activity is related to the geothermal power plant down the road, operated by Ormat Technologies. According to McCander, Ormat operates with a closed system at higher elevations. Water is pumped out and then re-injected. The geyser at Steamboat has also been around for decades longer and it disappeared long before the geothermal activity occurred nearby. Eruptions weren't uncommon a century ago. Why the land dried out and why the water is returning now are questions Mykander and others are investigating. Geysers operate on very complex systems. There are things that are needed for a geyser to function, and if any of those things are out of balance, it could be water, it could be pressure, it could be heat, then the geyser won't form, he said. After the site dried up day, McCander almost thought it was the end of it, that the South Reno geyser had officially disappeared once again. But as long as this impressive new plume continues to erupt, there may be more clues about the history and future of the hot water just beneath South Reno's surface. During the month of July 2025, the University of Utah Seismograph Stations, which monitors and operates the Yellowstone Seismic Network, located 52 earthquakes. Deformation trends, subsidence, continue. Steamboat Geyser had a lot of minor activity but no major water eruption. 
Yellowstone volcano remains at normal, background levels of activity.